Recently, I made a documentary about one hour long speaking about the issues within Star Stable. I mentioned the game development problems, the management, the employees, the shareholders, and much more. I showed data in the video as well as statistics and quotes from actual articles. I also included other Star Stable YouTubers. My whole point of making that video was to talk about the issues within the game since plenty of players are quitting at a rapid rate. Star Stable apparently has between 10 million to 40 million players, yet only a few hundred thousand ever log in per month. And we don't know how many of these logins come from the same person, since many people have multiple accounts. Overall, I made that video to say how worried I am for the game. It is falling apart at our feet and doesn't listen to its players. Without players, the game is nothing and will eventually end. Money can't save you if nobody wants to support you any longer. Businesses need money. Everyone does. But nobody wants to give money to a game that no longer makes them happy. You see what I mean? Now, as a person who likes to be realistic and view things from a mature standpoint, I like to see both perspectives. And my perspective is mainly as a player. I want to see both sides, how the game is doing well and how the game is doing bad. Sadly, there is more bad than good. Years ago, from about 2011 to 2017, it was more good than bad. The documentary I released was on January 14th. Plenty of people watched it during the premiere, and I was shocked to see how many people agreed with me and also said how they felt about the game or even mentioned their bad experiences with customer support. They also said how badly they missed how the game used to be. Well, until the White Knights came in. According to Google, the definition from Oxford Languages is a person or thing that comes to someone's aid. In this case, the White Knights are coming to Star Stable's side. This video is not meant to make fun of players and does not encourage bullying. The point of this video is to understand how White Knight behavior is toxic. Players aren't happy because they do not feel heard. And it has been 10 years since the game released and still is not even finished with half of the map. The storyline also isn't finished. Horses are getting boring and the game has become all grind. Older players are left behind. Newer players have fun until the fun is gone. How could anyone defend this? The game is also riddled with bugs. Star Stable made $44 million in revenue in 2020. People say they are a small indie game, although this game actually is a multi-million dollar business. How can a game at this size not listen to its players? Now it is time to bring in the White Knights the people who defend Star Stable and don't listen to other people regardless of the concern. Players aren't happy, as we obviously know. All we hear is how players wish they could go back to old Star Stable and that they miss the old storyline and the old updates and how the old game used to look. We miss how the game used to have love and care put into it. Imagine being that player. Your concerns for the game are that you are worried the game will end due to the players quitting, and also how little the game seems to care anymore about its players. You have the right to be upset. You paid for this game. You care about this game. You may even go as far as to say you are worried the game will end in the next few years if it doesn't pull itself together. Then finally, a white knight comes into the room and says right to you, stop complaining. You should be happy. We got a free horse for Star Stable's 10th birthday anniversary. That is exactly what I was told. The remarks of White Knights go even further. Some may say, if you don't like the game, then leave. Or, you aren't being grateful enough. Or better yet, your opinion makes me sad. This is toxic behavior. Invalidating another person's concerns is not just harmful, but also extremely dismissive. Some players have been playing this game since it was released, and even played the original games from Starshine Legacy. For a person to say, I am worried this game will end if it doesn't get fixed, to then be told something dismissive is just plain rude, and it also is toxic positivity. When I say I am worried about the game due to its bugs, bad customer support, lack of storyline, and other concerns, and then I get told, well, Star Stable has plenty of things to do. We have daily quests. We also have horses to train. 
not only dismisses the actual problem, but covers it up with excuses for the game. For example, the reason why Star Stable doesn't upload quests as much is because quests are hard to make, and horses are easier to make. Or even, this game is great, you guys just don't see how awesome it is. We have areas to explore, and we could ride horses, and Star Stable works so hard. One example I could think of when it comes to White Knights is when Star Stable dressage players begged Star Stable to please keep the lines and dots, meter points, in the dressage arena when it gets updated. Star Stable did not listen. Obviously, Star Stable dressage players were heavily upset. Some even cried because they put hours into their routine. They take this game seriously. One player, who I think is an ambassador, made a post on Instagram that is a classic example of a white knight. They rushed to Star Stable's side and completely dismissed players. They said, invalidating players' feelings, If the arena is too small, there is a bunch of big paddocks around Jorvik to have your shows in. Instead of just saying to Star Stable, why not listen to your players, who paid for your game? They then go on to say, maybe this is the time to create new methods or routines going on to invalidate the player's hard work for their dressage routines. Then they say, it saddens me to see such awful behavior because your lines and dots are not there. Sorry, but it saddens me. And I can't tell you how badly this infuriates me, because if you are going to say stuff like this, you might as well say, I don't care about your concerns. I am not listening to you. And I refuse to hear you. Because that is what this message portrays. Then it gets worse. They then say, I would like to spread some awareness, as if they are some type of activist. Regarding the term SSO dressage, it is in fact a very wrong term to use. You guys are not doing dressage, but equestrian quadrille. This is just more proof that white knights don't listen. SSO dressage is called SSO dressage because we know it is not real dressage. Real dressage is not in the game, so we create our own dressage. This person chooses to completely invalidate the SSO dressage community. Everyone is allowed to have an opinion. That is okay, but it crosses a line when it is bullying or invalidates other people's feelings. Star Stable removes things like April Fool's Day, the Calters, the fashion show, and more, like the Christmas quests. And then people get upset. White knights come to rush to Star Stable's side and say to these players who have paid money for this game, why don't you be grateful? It is hard to be grateful for a game that doesn't listen to you. It is hard to appreciate a game that obviously no longer cares about you. You are not going to appreciate something that does not appreciate you. Why would you rush to defend SSO if SSO doesn't even want to hear you? Recently, Star Stable has even been disabling the comment section on Instagram. If they see that players are upset, why not just listen to them? Babying Star Stable isn't going to make them love you. If anything, it is making the game fall apart. Without constructive criticism, without players being heard, players will lose interest. And that is exactly what is happening. When I made the trailer for my documentary, I had comments from people, which I had to delete because they were bullying me and calling me names. Some even went as far as to say that I was stupid and, again, should just be grateful. The problem with this is that I am not stupid. If anything, I am smart because I could see through the lies and toxic positivity. White knights are toxic positivity in human form. Are they the stupid ones? No. I think they are just players who really deeply care about this game and take it personal when somebody has a different opinion from them. They walk around this falling, breaking game and say how awesome it is and how amazing Star Stable is, yet refuse to acknowledge the player's concerns. Multiple people so far have even lost horses or star coin allowances due to glitches in the game. And you know what they were told? They were told that they were lying by other players. For a white knight to not only defend a business and validate a player and go as far as to tell that player that they are lying, even when they have proof, is straight up infuriating. White knights are major stands of the game. It is clear that they love Star Stable, but the problem is that you can love a game while also critiquing it. I love Star Stable, but I also can criticize it to see it get better. You are not a hater for wanting something to improve. White knights don't know how to comprehend other people's issues. I place a lot of sentimental value into the game. When I was 14, I could have been considered a white knight due to how badly I promoted and defended this game. If anyone even said the game could end, I would be extremely upset. If anybody even told me that they didn't like the game, I took it as a personal offense. 
but as I grew, I started to see through things and realize that issues are not ignorable, eventually. Daniela Moonstar mentioned in her video how she once was talking to a player discussing opinions, and that player suddenly mentioned a person in their family who was no longer living. White knights, from what I have seen, tend to put their own personal matters into defending the game. That is why they take it so personal. I once was playing the game and discussing the game with a player. Then, out of nowhere, they brought up a family matter, as if that family problem affected the game. White knights, I believe, don't know how to accept other people's opinions due to how they place so much personal sentiment into this game. If you don't like the game, they act as if you said that you don't like them as a person. If you don't like the horses, that must mean that you don't like this person who loves those horses. If you don't like the quest, then you must not like that person who reads all about the storyline. Ginny O mentioned in her recent video about how players who place lots of sentiment into games may have problems and we should probably worry for them. It is not normal to place such a heavy value on a game, and to that I totally agree. Keep in mind, I am paraphrasing, and if I get their words wrong, Daniela Moonstar's or Ginny O's, I apologize. When I was 14, I was struggling severely in ways that I cannot mention in this video due to the graphic nature. However, as you probably know, I have PTSD. Take it as you will, connect the dots. And if somebody told me that the game was bad, of course I took it personal. Technically, I was a white knight, even back then when the game wasn't falling apart. But just because we may be broken or hurt or love a game doesn't mean that we have the right to invalidate other people or dismiss their feelings. If anything, you are hurting people by making them not feel heard. A player who says they wish the game was better, a player who wants storyline, a player who wants their horses back, a player who wants to fix bugs, is not an ungrateful player. They are simply a person who deserves to have their needs met. If the needs cannot be met, they should at least be heard and listened to. But so far, customer service can't even read our emails. One player in particular tried to report a person who was hacking the game. Instead of Star Stable banning that player, they banned the player who reported the problem. The player who was innocent. It is obvious that Star Stable can't read our emails, or simply reads part of the email and just responds however they feel is quickest. Recently, I questioned Star Stable about the app horse prices. Recently, since I couldn't see the price of the horse in the app. They told me they couldn't tell me the price because it is a surprise, and they don't want to ruin the fun. They acted as if I was asking about the price of a new horse coming out in the future. It is clear that they do not read what we say. They do not want to hear what we say. And that is the problem with White Knights. The more they defend Star Stable, the more they single-handedly put down players and boost up Star Stable for bad behavior. They reward Star Stable for the bare minimum, or below minimum standard, while they invalidate players who have valid concerns. Even if you take this game personally, it doesn't give you the right to treat people as if they are attacking you personally. Yorvik has a history of magical supernatural things, like Pandoric Energy and Soul Riders, even druids who protect secret societies. The storyline has changed over the past few years, but to this day, Jarlheim has a statue of John Jarl inside this castle-like little coastal town. Sometimes I like to picture Jorvik as a place that is defended by Soul Riders, just like how the storyline stated. Jorvik is like Jarlheim, its own town, protected by a barrier like the castle walls of Jarlheim. But out of all the changes Star Stable has added, I had no clue White Knights of Jorvik would be the fastest growing change yet. And I hope that soon we could break down that wall and help Star Stable finally hear us so we could resolve this game before it is too late. Thank you for watching. I hope you like the video and also leave a comment and make sure you subscribe and also turn notifications on. Have a great day or a great night wherever you are. Bye!